everybody, today we've got a very interesting video. Nestled within the foothills of Cleveland, Georgia is a very strange place. You could say it's one of the most unique hospitals in the world. Well, it's not really a hospital, but it's called one. That's right, we're taking a journey to visit the Babyland General Hospital. Now, it may not be a real hospital, but it is complete with adoptions, birth certificates, babies being birthed by nurses, and even baby incubators. So it's definitely modeled after a real hospital, but it's no hospital you've ever seen before. Personally, I've been really anticipating this trip and was super excited the morning of because it's a place I enjoyed since I was a kid. I was raised with the Cabbage Patch Kids, my mom was an 80s kid, and she even had a few Cabbage Patch Kids of her own, so naturally she passed them on to me. And when I was young, I ended up getting a few for Christmas a couple years in a row, so something I'm very familiar with. The ride there was just so beautiful, the trees were all changing and the weather was just the right temperature. We couldn't help but notice the mountains and their strange shapes, slopes to pyramid looking mountains many of them covered in trees and kudzu. One can't help but wonder what's potentially lying beneath. Now, this isn't the first time that I've been to Babyland General, but the last time I was here, it was not the intimidating structure that it is today. It was in a very small building on the other side of town, but at the time, I remember it being a very surreal experience. I must admit that the smell of Cabbage Patch Babies is very distinct and it opened up a big can of nostalgia for me. This was Sol's first time visiting Babyland General, but he seemed pretty impressed by the beautiful landscaping and architecture of the new Babyland Hospital. On the outside, we see these massive statues depicting the classic Cabbage Patch Kids logo. You know, the baby head emerging from the cabbage. There's actually even a sign with Colonel Casey on it surrounded by an assortment of beautiful flowers. It really is a spectacle. There's just this wide open space with this big white building standing on top of a hill. And there's definitely a weird vibe as it's far enough away from town to where it's nearly silent when you're standing out on the lawn. I don't know, there was kind of a weird ambience here, but it was still kind of peaceful. Upon entering the building, we noticed a very strange wall that was covered in celebrity photos that seemed to be praising Xavier for, I don't know, the Cabbage Patch Kids, I guess? Not gonna lie, that was a little strange. I'm not sure why so many celebrities were so excited about the Cabbage Patch Kids. Like, I get that they were a cultural phenomenon at the time, and maybe this is just some sort of marketing scheme, but it was pretty strange. We went to the admission desk and a very nice nurse told us that it was free aside from whatever you could decide to purchase, so we walked on in. One of the weird things about the entrance is the checkerboard white and black floor. Now, obviously, you know, you could say that's just a coincidence, but what are the chances? There are countless design choices, but they decided on the black and white checkerboard. Some argue that this is to keep the focus on the products, but I don't know, to me, the checkerboard pattern is a little distracting. Immediately, as we begin to explore, the smell of the Cabbage Patch Kids hit us like a ton of bricks. There really is no other smell like it, and if you've ever had a Cabbage Patch Kid, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but the whole place is set up sort of like a nursery. There are literally thousands of plush dolls and toys strewn about the different rooms, and each room has a sort of different theme. However, the most obvious feature is the tree in the middle of the largest room. I'm not sure if this is the same tree from the original Babyland General, but it certainly looks the same to me. We walked around and checked everything out for a while. The music playing was your typical child's nursery playlist, which was a little grating at first, but then they started playing some actual Cabbage Patch Kids songs, which were admittedly better than the other stuff. Um,
ini sih. There are a few areas where the babies are still being grown in cabbages and it's just a strange vibe walking around with these weird lullabies and um, it can be a little creepy. But then you've got the main section where these babies are all around the tree where they're born. So there are multiple areas where you can see the dolls and there is even a baby incubator. So wait, this is connected with the baby incubators? Hmm, perhaps mother cabbage is delivering preemie babies. Note, there are 12 and 9 inch dolls, but... <laughs> also, the stork in the delivery room? It's pretty creepy. It's a little... Uh, he's... Hmm. I mean, he's old. Yeah. But anyway, this is the room where they keep the babies that are up for adoption. And these babies are different because these are handmade. These aren't the typical uh, mass-produced Cabbage Patch Kids. These ones are apparently special and they're, I think much more expensive than the ones you can buy that are out on the show floor. But yeah, this is basically where they put the special babies up for adoption, like a store or a World's Fair sideshow. To me, it seems clear that whoever first thought of this knew the history of babies being sold and presented at expositions around the world. There are even posters from the 1900s that show the exact same cabbage symbolism. So this is not a phenomena that was started in the 80s, but in fact these cabbages and their baby symbolism date back centuries, and they're part of our psyche. Where do babies come from? Oh, you came from the cabbage patch, dear. Oh, the stork delivered you. And other phrases like mon petit chou are a testament to how deeply intertwined this narrative has become in our culture. The question is, did the 21-year-old Xavier know about this? Obviously, it's hard to know for sure, but it really does seem like somebody knows what's going on here. I mean, babies being filled with a magicillin? That's weird. Birth certificates? I mean, this is a possible reason why these dolls are so successful. This underlying narrative of being artificially birthed and adopted is a part of our subconscious. So there's some strange nostalgic feeling of being able to adopt a doll as if it were a real baby. Perhaps some sort of symbolic method of getting the masses to participate in this action as if it were normal. A repetition of the past, perhaps. If you haven't watched our videos on the topic, well, there is a dark history to the Cabbage Patch Kids. We've extensively covered this in our videos on our channel, but this connects with the Cabbage Patch Baby repopulation postcards and the first movie ever made. The Cabbage Baby postcards were surreal artworks made from the 1900s to the 1920 period and they depict the farming of children in cabbage patches. Not only that, but the postcards also say that these babies were up for sale. Of course, the excuse is that, oh, you know, this was a time where it was very taboo to talk about sex, so they had to make up these stories. But I'm not so sure if that's the entire picture. Otherwise, why would these postcards make references to repopulation, baby incubators, and world fairs. These postcards seem to depict babies being sold as products. Was this a part of a time where people couldn't reproduce so they literally had to buy babies? Or maybe they didn't know what they were? Or perhaps there was a plague of sterility? Well, it gets even stranger when you consider that the first movie ever made was La Fée à Choux by Alice Guy. This is known as the first narrative film, and it dates back to 1896. The 1900 version depicts a woman abusing newborn babies by pulling them abruptly out of these cabbages while she places them on the floor as they scream and cry. A very strange and creepy movie. And then in the 902 one, 
there was a midwife to the upper class, which is another supposed remake. This makes it clear that they were treating the babies in the same fashion as Babyland does. They were being sold as if they were dolls. They even had a reserve of babies that were being grown for these upper class couples who were acting as if they had never seen a baby before. I wanted to take a moment to address some of the comments saying things like, Wow, grown adults really don't know where babies come from. Obviously, we know how babies are made organically, but what we're seeing is that it's not the only way, and that things like the artificial womb have been patented since the 1950s, so this isn't science fiction. Why would there be such a thing as an artificial womb? Why would it be needed, especially so soon after an alleged baby boom? I don't know. Again, this gets into some much deeper materials, such as resets and repopulation, but it's definitely interesting to consider that this history came along long before the 80s, and it wasn't an invented idea, it was a repurposed idea. Back to the tour. At first, I was worried that we maybe got here a little too late to see a live birth, but it turns out we were just in time because 20 minutes after we got there, a live birth was announced, so we stood there and waited for this live birth to happen. Now, I remember when I saw this, as a little girl, I was completely enamored. Even though this new baby land general is arguably, you know, much better than the original, the small space and low light gave the live birth a much more intimate feeling, whereas this new setup is, it's just sort of out in the open, which is obviously fine, but I just wanted to note the difference between the old performance and the new one. So. Here's the video of the live birth, and before we check it out, I just wanted to say that if you're interested in supporting our research, last month we came out with our first ever book on this topic. The Cabbage Babies, Repopulation Postcards, and the first movie ever made. It's a perfect coffee table book for you to have weird discussions with your friends and family with. It's a pretty thick book too, with uh, hundreds of high quality images, many postcards that we have personally collected and scanned ourselves, and it's pretty much a textbook. It's our first time doing something like this, and so far it's become a bestseller in its category, and it seems that everybody has been enjoying it. So thank you so much to everyone who has helped us out by purchasing it, and if you're interested in this kind of stuff, maybe consider checking it out. Anyway, let's get back to the live birth. All vital signs are normal. If we have any gentlemen in our audience who might get queasy during this delivery, please go back to their father's waiting room and pace. Started moving. Oh, yeah. Cabbage dilation, 10 leaves apart, nurse Adeline to delivery staff, mother cabbage in labor, all staff code green. Oh. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Baby Lynn. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Is this anyone's first time here? Yes. All right. Well, there's no need to be nervous. My name's Nurse Adeline, and I'm an LPN here, Baby Lynn. And that stands for licensed patch nurse. And I'm here to assist Mother Cabbage with this delivery. Now, the way that we know Mother Cabbage has gone into labor is the crystals at the bottom of the tree start to glow just a little bit brighter. And the bunny bees flying above my head sprinkle down a magic crystal pollen. And that's going to tell us whether we have a baby boy or a baby girl. So, what do you guys have for today, boy or a girl? Girl. Girl. Boy. Boy. Twins. Twins. <laughs> All right, there's a little bit of both, so just be sure to need you all to cross your fingers super, super tight. Put them high in the sky, and if you want a baby girl, say pink, pink, pink. Pink, 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 And if you want a baby boy, say blue, blue, blue. Blue, blue, blue. All right, I'm going to do... for twins. I'm going to do a quick sonogram just to be sure. It does look like a happy, healthy baby. And with all that pink, it looks like it is going to be a baby girl today. All right, I'm going to get her blanket ready for her. And then the first thing I'm going to do is give Mother Cabbage a shot of a magicillin. 
Now, a magicillin is not going to hurt or harm mother cabbage or the baby. It's just going to help to make sure that her leaves are nice and loose for a smoother delivery. <laughs> Next, I'm going to give her an extra large dose of TLC. Does anybody know what TLC stands for? Tender love and care, that's right. And here at Baby Land, we believe in giving all of our babies only the biggest doses of TLC. Next, I'm going to perform a procedure called an esiotomy. Baby Land is the only hospital in the entire world that does perform this procedure. I'm not quite sure why, though, because I have always had really good luck, and I have never once had to perform a C-section. And for all you newcomers, that does stand for cabbage section here at Baby Land. <laughs> Now I'm going to measure to make sure mother cabbage is in fact dilated a full 10 leaves apart. And she is, so we're off to a very good start. Now mother cabbage has already had a couple deliveries today, so she's feeling a little bit nervous and just a little bit tired. So I need you all to help her out and take a deep breath in. And let out. One more deep breath in. And out. All right, that helped out mother cabbage so much that I think she is ready to start pushing. So on the count of three, I need you all to yell push as loud as you can, all right? One, two, three. Push. All right, that was really good. I see a lot of movement, and I do see the baby's head first, which is the best news that I could give you guys, because if I were to see an arm or a leg, that's what's known as a branch delivery, and you guys will be stuck here for a very long time. All right, one more push, and I think our baby girl should be here. Ready? One, two, three. Push. And here she is. All right, I'm going to wrap her up and tell you guys a few things about her. Now, the very first thing that I did notice is this baby girl was born bald, but that, of course, does not make her any less beautiful or less special. It just means that our interns got a little lazy last night and they forgot to fertilize her part of the patch. This baby girl was also born with some beautiful brown eyes and a little Audi belly button where I gently clipped her for mother cabbage. And now this next part can be just a little bit embarrassing. So will you guys promise it will a lot better? Y'all yeah. no yeah. promise? Yeah. Just like all our babies born here at Babyland, she has the famous Xavier Roberts birthmark on her little bottom. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna wrap her back up. And then before I take her over there to the Babyland delivery nursery, where you guys can watch her get her very first checkup, she does need a first and middle name. So do you guys have any suggestions? Dylan. Dylan? Amethyst. Amethyst? Mary Lee. Mary Lee? That's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like Mary. All right. I'm going to ask her what she thinks about all those names. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you sure? Okay, I'll let them know. She said she loved all those name suggestions, but she is giving up the name Mary Amethyst, and with a name like that, she is sure to be famous one day. Now give this baby girl a big round of applause because it is her birthday. I will. I just got to take one picture of this one. Is this a Yeah, it is. Drops in her eyes. Oh, give her a shot of vitamin K. Okay. okay, we just got our little baby, adopted our Cabbage Patch kid, his name's Solomon.
Got them a little onesie. And it comes with a birth certificate. Which we will fill out. I just thought it was so weird that they have this thing called Imagicillin, which I guess is a quirky little part of their lore, but still makes this seem like some sort of artificial generation. Right above it was the hybrid bunny bees hanging from the tree, so they seem to be the pollinators of these Cabbage Patch babies, which to me is no coincidence because bunnies and bees are considered to be fertility symbols. I did find it interesting that they implemented a lot of crystals and geodes and things of that nature. Um, these crystals are supposedly made to glow only when mother cabbage is about to give birth. So these babies are on a mountain or in the wilderness, possibly near a cave. That's part of the lore. Um, right after we were done, we decided to make a trip to the nearby town of Dahlonega. And this is another place that I visited a few times in my childhood. Now, the reason we visited Dahlonega is because of the story of the Cabbage Patch Kids. The villain, known as Lavender McDay, wants to use the Cabbage Patch Kids as her slaves to mine for gold. And if you don't know, Dahlonega is very famous for being a gold town. Their town's tagline is, it's pure gold. I came here a few times on field trips growing up, and going back was pretty surreal because it's not a place I ever thought I would visit again. But Everybody here was really nice and kind, and I found it interesting that our tour kept mentioning the low height of the tunnels. Despite the myth that people were much shorter back then, it would have been difficult to even have grown men, even if they were shorter, working in these tunnels. Now, I'm not saying that everything that the tour teaches is complete fiction, but she did mention that there were children working in these mines. Miners were working here. Think about it, miners or miners. I do think it's a little bit strange that the Babyland General is so close to these gold mines. Uh, it just seems a little too coincidental. Why did Xavier decide to build Babyland so close to where there was so much gold? Was it a conscious decision? It does seem like he grew up around there, um, as we were told by a local that his friend was roommates with him back in college. So. I don't know, it's almost as if the lore was inspired by actual events. I just wanted to say that if you do go to these places after watching this video, to please be respectful. Um, everybody that we interacted with was so kind and helpful. And just because they work there doesn't mean that they're willingly involved in hiding some deep dark secret. A lot of the nurses at Babyland General just seemed like young women who lived in town who wanted a job. And the same goes for the gold mine. Everybody there was just so nice and seemed to really have a passion for what they do. And just because we might disagree with the narrative that they're presenting does not mean that we are at odds with them in any way. I do highly recommend that you visit these places if you're interested in this kind of stuff because it's a fun little trip. Um, I did want to mention that, you know, we are very aware that Xavier Reynolds did hijack this concept from Martha Nelson Thomas. I do find the Xavier story a little fishy. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, there are many videos discussing the dark history of the Cabbage Patch Kids that seem to highlight the aspect of theft rather than exploring the history of the Cabbage concept itself. There also seems to be a new movie documentary coming out. People have been commenting that YouTube is showing ads on our video for this new Cabbage Patch movie and make of it what you will, but it does seem like an attempt to cover up some of this new info, these new perspectives that are coming to the surface. The whole trailer seems to be inspired by this idea. They are calling it the Billion Dollar Babies, which is supposedly, quote, captures the incredible true story of the Cabbage Patch Kids, leaving nothing untouched, including the fundamental dispute over who originated the idea. A little weird. While they don't cover any of this alternative history, as far as I know, which is suspicious because at some point you'd have to think that they have to be aware of the early postcards and the Alice Guy film, but I haven't seen any mention of it by them. Um, it would make a great documentary, but instead the movie is focused on the dark history of capitalism uh, and it's narrated by Neil Patrick Harris. Um, a lot of people like him. Anyway. 
We hope you enjoyed that and we have some more interesting things to discuss about these cabbage babies, but for now, that's Babyland General. I would say overall it's a very strange place, even if it's not a hospital, the whole aspect of going there and doing this, you know, these pretend adoptions, it's um it's a little bizarre. But I can understand how, you know, to children it can seem like a lot of fun. I know I certainly enjoyed it when I was a kid. So let us know your thoughts and your comments. And if there's anything that we missed or, you know, something that you think we should explore, let us know. Thanks for all the support. And all we can hope is that our minds may be unveiled. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?